In this episode, I invite you to think about this future focused question. What if we could increase urban and community amenities, services and infrastructure, including mobile connectivity and high speed internet, to attract and retain a vibrant resident community of all ages? To help you answer this question, let's recap what we know. Yarra Ranges faces an ageing population. Not only is the Yarra Ranges population older than the metropolitan Melbourne and Victorian averages, the rate of ageing in the Yarra Ranges is faster than that of Metro Melbourne and the state. So what does all of this mean? Well, here's the challenge in a nutshell. For economic sustainability, we need more than just a larger population. We also need to ensure that population growth accounts for an aging population with measures to ensure we also grow the productive population. In other words, the 16 to 59 age group. So as you reflect on the question about how we could attract and retain a vibrant resident community for all ages, here are a few things you may want to consider. First one is this trend, an active aging population. What this all means is that from an economic and planning perspective, we need to consider much more than just the provision of retirement homes and the provision of healthcare facilities. Additionally, we need to consider how a broader range of existing infrastructure and services can be adapted to be more inclusive of older residents. Let's look at the second trend, which is related to the first, but the second trend is multi-generational living, a topic that I'll be exploring further in our series three videos around housing. So although we know that towns of the future will need to accommodate more older Australians, nobody wants their neighbourhood or indeed the town to develop into one large retirement village. In fact, there are a multitude of problems if we allow neighbourhoods or entire towns to evolve into enclaves that only attract one age group or one socio-economic demographic. So returning to the question of how we could attract and retain a vibrant resident community of all ages, here's a case study I've prepared for you to help visualise what this could look like. Touted as a way to encourage multi-generational living, promoting equality and diversity, and minimising loneliness, the trend towards the 15-minute city concept is quickly gaining traction. This trend was recently featured in a Springwise article in August 2021. Proponents of the concept believe that cities should be designed to reduce the distance that people need to travel daily. Imagine if everywhere you needed to travel on a daily basis, work, school or cafe, was just a 15-minute bicycle ride from your home. Advocates of the 15-minute city point to its many benefits, stating that the need for transportation is minimised, which leads to less traffic and noise, reduced air pollution and fewer carbon emissions. It encourages human-powered transportation, such as biking and walking, which have proven health benefits. The easy accessibility to services provides, or sorry, improves the, the quality of life and promotes equality and diversity. And it can help elevate loneliness by making it easier to meet and interact with neighbours. And finally, Shorter commutes often mean more time for recreation and family and more money saved. If you think about the current wave of migration away from Australian cities, such as Melbourne, this certainly provides a window of opportunity for the Yarra Ranges. However, this also highlights one of the most difficult aspects of the 15-minute city, how to move jobs closer to workers. For many, such as those who work in manufacturing, delivery and warehousing, this may be impossible, but for others, a number of solutions have been suggested. These include developing neighbourhood co-working hubs and multiple use buildings. Before the pandemic, the biggest hurdle for many jobs was convincing companies that employees can successfully work remotely. However, after nearly two years of remote working, many employers have begun to move, if not to full-time remote working, then to a hybrid system.
If this topic is of particular interest to you, I've prepared a bonus question you may wish to consider. Here's the question. What is your vision for an alternative town of the future where people from all ages and all walks of life can live, work and play rather than allowing neighbourhoods to evolve as enclaves segregated by age, wealth or ethnicity?